Hello everyone, my name is Bartosz Jabłoński. I'm really happy to meet you here at this SaaS Explorer conference. And uh, I'm really happy that you uh, would like to share your time with me today during my presentation. The presentation title is Base Plus Package for SaaS. Before I uh, talk about it, let me briefly introduce myself. So I'm a mathematician by train and data wrangler by trait. Uh, I'm a seasoned SaaS user. I've been working with SaaS for quite some time. I gained my experience in uh, uh, banking, clinical trials, telecommunication, also as a, an educator. Um, I'm doing classes of SaaS programming on the Warsaw University of Technology at Faculty of Mathematics and Information Science. Uh, I'm a fan of SaaS. I'm SaaS geek. Uh, I'm a member of Polish SaaS users group. Uh, and uh, I'm actively participating in uh, the online game SAS Sensei, uh, which you can try on um, on the internet. Uh, my internal problem solver uh, is enabled when you say you probably can't do something like this in SAS. The presentation today uh, will be about a particular um, SAS package, which I prepared some time ago. I would like to share with you, I would like to explore its possibilities uh, together with you. But let's start uh, with uh, answering the question, what are SaaS packages? Every major uh, programming community, um, when uh, users uh, and developers uh, within that community want to share uh, their uh, job, their programs, their code, they usually use the concept of a package. Uh, whether it will be tech community or R community or Python community, uh, all of them sharing their code, sharing their solutions with other by using packages. So some time ago, I had this question, why not something to do some such thing in SaaS? And then uh, back in the 2019, I started to work on this idea of SaaS packages. SaaS package is a zip file containing your code organized in the proper way with additional driving files. Uh, and the major idea for the SaaS package is to be simple and easy to access code sharing medium. Uh, which uh, on one hand uh, allow developer to organize the code in the way the developer wants the code to be, and on the other hand, minimize the user necessity for uh, setting up the working environment. And uh, to work with package, uh, there is this idea of SAS package framework, uh, which basically is a group of macros which allows you to use and develop SAS packages. The Location for the SAS packages uh, and the SAS packages framework uh, is this GitHub repository under my user Yabon, uh, and the repository's name is SAS underscore packages. Uh, the best, the simplest way to find this repository is just to open web browser and type SAS underscore packages and GitHub in your browser. When you open the browser, write GitHub. SAS underscore packages. And probably one of the first results you will get directs you to the web page with the framework and all the packages. So Yabon slash SAS packages. You can find all the information about how to use it, uh, all the mm, documentation. Also, there is a group of recordings from previous conferences you may want to uh, see. Uh, to learn more about the framework. During my previous talks uh, on SAS Global Forum 2020 or 2021, I was uh, presenting the idea of the framework. I was showing you how to develop the package. And today I would like to focus on the user side uh, of the project, of the idea, and especially uh, show you the Base Plus package. So the goals for today. The first is to show you what the base plus package can offer. The second goal for today is to show you how easy you can use it with the SAS packages framework. And the third one is to show you that SAS packages can be beneficial for you as a general solution for your programming. There are a few steps to start with the process. Uh, and one of them is to create a folder in which you, can, you will store uh, the packages and the packages framework. Now, usually the uh, process can be done either automatically using a code or you just can 
go to the web page and copy the file with the SPF in .sas uh, containing the frame. But let's assume that you are using the programming interface to do it. When, you're doing, when you are doing it for the very, very first time, there are a few lines of code you need to execute. But when you work with the SAS framework and packages uh, for the next and next uh, times, uh, the number of lines of code you are using to enable the framework and start packages reduced to only three lines. But now let's do it step by step. So for the very first time, when you created the folder within which you are going to store framework and the packages, you need to assign the file name uh, referenced named packages. The one uh, will be pointing to location where you store the framework and the packages. Now you need to use this uh, GitHub link, which is also available on the web uh, page on the repository. So you don't have to memorize it by heart. You can just go to the um, repository and download the, the, this code snippet. Uh, now uh, the third step is to enable this framework for your session. This two lines enables the framework temporarily. So if you want to have the framework uh, for you working for the next uh, session, you need to install the SPF init uh, framework and you also need to install base plus package. To do it, you are using the install package macro twice. First for the installing the SPF init and the second time for installing base plus. But when you do this code and when you store both the framework and the package on your machine, whether it will be base SAS or server or solution or even VIA. Uh, for the next usage, all you need to do is just to assign the location for the framework for the for, for the packages folder and include the SPF init.sas file and then use the load package macro to enable the base plus package. But let's stop with the theory. Let's do some practice. Let's do a demo. Uh, after all, it's the best way to learn something by doing. So let's jump to our SAS session. And during this presentation, I will be switching between base SAS session, DMS session, uh, the enterprise guide session connected to a SAS server, and SAS via server through a SAS studio. So uh, I will show you that uh, packages are available from all possible programming environments you may use. So. Let's start with the base SAS session. Uh, first step is to prepare ourselves a folder within which we are going to store our packages. In this case, I'm going to put it on my R drive and name the folder packages. This uh, option, DLC create dir, allows uh, SAS to create subfolders within a folders even if they don't exist. And uh, I use this trick to prepare the one. When I run the code, and I look into the uh, log, I can see that the physical name of the folder to which the library was assigned is r slash packages. The next step, as I said on the a few minutes ago, is to assign the file name reference, assign the URL for the GitHub repository, and running the SPF init uh, framework. So let, let's, let's do it. Depending on your internet connection speed, it might take takes few seconds. Let's look into the log. Now try to install the framework. Again, again, process is running few seconds. You can see in the log information that the process was executed with the return code zero, so we successfully get the framework and if you look into the folder with the um, packages uh, here are slash packages you see that we have this sas file containing the framework the next step let's include the framework and when the framework is included we can install the base plus package first step macro install package and the name of the package. When we run the code in the log, we can see that the base plus package was successfully installed in the folder. And when we again look into this uh, directory, we see that the uh, base plus.zip file is here. 
Uh, first, good practice is to check out the help information about the package. And then when you are satisfied, you can load the package. So now let's see what the help package macro will tell us about the base plus package. Let me run it. And let look, let's look into the log, because log is the location where the help information is printed. So there's like a lot of things happening here. But let's start from the very, very beginning. Uh, the information uh, at the top says that the data was loaded from the this location. This is the base plus package. Version is 1.17. It's licensed on the MIT license. And as you can see here, the base plus uh, is a bunch of functionalities I'm missing in the base SAS. And in this place, I would like to say my big thanks to several people who uh, gave me uh, inspiration for developing elements of this uh, of this package. Mark, Paul, Richard, Christian, Alan, Anna Maria, Michal, Quentin. Thank you very much for your inspiration. The Base Plus package contains a lot of uh, functionalities. Here you can see a lot of examples, which I'm just very fast scrolling, but we will focus on them in a moment. There is a 49 different uh, macros format or functions within this uh, package. Uh, and I would like to show you some of those functionalities. As I said, packages are available for different SAS sessions. So let me switch for, for work with these examples on a different platforms too. Here we have a SAS server uh, working on the Linux machine and we have exactly the same code uh, which you just saw except that the location of the package framework is a bit different. Now let me create a folder for packages and run this here. The location was created. If, you ref if, if we refresh this folder, you can see we have the packages folder here. And inside this one, we are going to, we are going to uh, start our um, framework and, and store everything. So let's run all those lines as we did previously. And let's look into the log to see the results. Of the process. I will scroll down to the very bottom of the log just to show you that the final line, which was the package loading, was executed successfully. When you scroll down, you will see that there is this sysloaded packages macro variable, uh, and the value of this macro variable is the list of packages which are loaded into your current session. So you can see we have base plus 1.17 loaded into our session. Here we are on a SAS via server. We're using SAS Studio to run the code on the machine. And let's create a folder for packages. And let's load the base plus to our session as we did in the previous example. If you look into the log, we have our base plus 1.17 loaded into our session. So we can start to play with the content of the package. Here is our first example, and it will be about the quick sort light function, which is, which is provided by the base plus. But before we investigate the example, let me show you one more thing. When you go to the GitHub repository and go to the packages folder, you will see there that the base plus zip file, but also you will see there base plus md file, which is documentation for all the elements of the package. So if you want to learn more about how the examples I'm going to show you works, how how uh, the function macros and formats provided in the package works, uh, you can check out the documentation within this particular md file. All elements of the package are described here. Uh, the package um, header and uh, examples and detailed documentation about the package is here.
But now we are back to our example. So the first function I would like to show you is the quick sort light. Uh, this is an alternative to the SARS sort n function. Basically, they are doing the same stuff. They are sorting an array. Uh, we have an array of 25 million uh, of cells here. Uh, we're going to populate the array with the random val val uh, values, and then we are going to sort both arrays once by quick sort light and then by sort n. Let me select the code and run it for you. It will take a few seconds to run. Now we see the log from the processing and you may ask, okay, but why, uh, why to create a new function which basically gives the same result as the one provided by SAS, the, the default one? Well, the processing time, both for table population and for sorting, in both cases, is almost the same. So it looks like there is no difference. But when you look closely at the memory used by the quick sort light function, you will see that it look it's almost ten it's even more than times ten times smaller than the amount of memory used by the sort n. And sometimes when you are working on the environment when there is not enough uh, memory for your session, you may be surprised like here in this via session the processing of sort n with the 25 million uh, element tables ended with the insufficient memory error and quick sort did the job since we are working on vi environment let's do the next example here the next uh, macro which i'm going to show you is called the duplicate list s which means that the macro variable which contains a list of strings separated by space can be easily deduplicated so all the elements which are not unique will be removed. All the copies of the elements will be removed. So when we run this code, we will see that the list which was provided, which contained dou doubles, for example, four was used multiple time, times, now it's cleared from the doubles. And the next example uh, is the zip evolve uh, macro, which allows you to concatenate two list of strings uh, with the use of a provided function. The default, fu default function for the zip evolve is the cat function. So basically the first element from the first list would be con concatenated with the first element of the second list and so on. So the result of the run would be looking like this. So we have 1a, 2b, 3c, 4d, 5e and 6f. When you want to use some more advanced uh, function, you may use these additional arguments, which indicating the function you want to use to concatenate to lists, uh, additional arguments for that functions or formats you want to apply to the result of the function. And in this case, when you have numbers one to six and it's three day, three years, 2018, 2019, and 2020, and the middle argument for the MDY function equal to 5, you will get the following result. The first list is connected with the second list with the middle argument of 5 for the MDY function and we get the following list of dates from those two lists. Of course, formatted by the date 11 format. Next example uh, is the rain cloud plot macro which allows you to plot uh, rain, plo rain cloud plots uh, with the data set provided with the, the grouping variable and or class variable if you prefer and the value which will be counted for the distribution. So when you run this code you'll get this beautiful plot presenting rain clouds for all drive, from the drive, and read drive for cars dataset, and uh, the distribution is against the invoice value. This next example is about the zipping functionality, the zip library macro, which allows you to zip all the files, all the SAS datasets from a given library into one zip file, and the second one, which allows you to unzip this single file into library again. 
uh, and uh, possible uh, situation is that you are zipping all data sets from given library into one zip file or you can zip them separately so let's create two libraries tests and test zip in the documents folder here and let's put the uh, five data sets uh, inside that library test as you can see we have all the data here let's refresh the documents folder you can see there are two subfolders test and test zips and inside this test we've got five data sets now the test zip is empty so let's run the macro and you will see that the, all five data sets were zipped into the zip.test file inside the test zip folder now when you want to restore the data sets from the zip you just use unzip library macro you indicate the location of the zip file name of the file and some additional parameters like the mode of the zipping whether it was single file or multiple files or should the zip file will be, should the zip file be deleted after unzipping in case in this case yes so let's unzip the files they will un will be unzipped here into this location now let me refresh and you can see the zip file was removed and the files are unzipped inside this location this example and the next one which i'm going to show you in a sec um, are about the problem that in the sas the data set name cannot extend 32 the long data set name macro allows you to wrap up the, any name of your data set you want uh, and work with those data sets um, uh, you now indicate the library you indicate options for the data set and its name is wrapped up by this macro here so we can have peanut butter and jelly with a hot dog in a box and stars as the name of our data set and it will work without any problems the data set will be created and here in the log you'll see the note that the data set with the funny name is covered under the hood as a special data set name of this form when you want to uh, use the data set in the next uh, step as an input data let's create this johnny xy data set with quite a name right here You can see that the data set with one observation was created. The name of the data set was wrapped up under this special name here. And now thing is that with this LDSN, so long data set name uh, macro, also the data set uh, original name can be uh, extracted with the indesn in 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 name option and the simget function because there is additional special general macro global macro variable created for this particular data set so when you so when you run when you run this code you will see the name of the data set is here at the very end the same situation is about naming variables in sas they cannot be longer than 32 characters and some users may have problem with it with this so for that particular situation long var name macro and long long var name label macro are provided one allows you to create a label label for the variable and the other behaves like a proper replacement for a variable name so when you run this code you will see that your data set was created and the variable under the hood has the proper label so you know which variable is the one you created and you can use them even in the where statement for execution here we go 
This example is about the delete dataset function, which allows you to delete the delete dataset by name. So basically, you are putting the dataset name here and or in a variable and just run the function to delete the dataset. Let's see, we have those three datasets. One of them is a view and one of them is indexed inside the work library. Let's run the code. Let's look into the work. Everything was created. Let's look into the work. You can see test one, test two, and test three, those data sets. And now when I run this data step, all the data sets were deleted. When I refresh the work, you will see they were removed. Okay, uh, there are plenty more examples in the Base Plus package, but now I want to focus on something else. What is the key takeaway from what you just saw? Thing is that without any problems, without any additional effort, by running few lines of code, you are able to access a lot of additional functionalities provided to you by this package. It's not that the base package, base plus package is any special. It's just a pretext to show you that you can easily share your code, your achievements with other people. All you need to do is to wrap this code up in a package and share the single file, single file with the package. So to summary, uh, all the information about packages are available at the GitHub repository. There is the framework. There are examples of packages you can use for your production work, as I'm doing in my job. And if you want to uh, try to work with it, just go to the GitHub. Let me one more time show you the address. The github.com slash yabon slash sas underscore packages. All the information is here, including the base plus package and its documentation. If you want to support the project and if you want to engage in uh, popularization of the SAS package framework, star the, the Git repository so more people can see it. Uh, link, like it on uh, YouTube, especially the videos promoting the idea. You can even go to this uh, initiative at sascommunities.com post which is the idea of adding the SAS packages framework to the base SAS or via as a constant element. At this moment, I would like to thank you uh, one more time for sharing your time with me during this presentation. Uh, I'm Bartosz Jabłoński. I'm active member of Polish SAS users group. You can see uh, our web page. You can visit it. You can see what we are doing. Support us if you want. And thank you very much for your time. If you want to contact me, write at yabon at gmail.com. Uh, usually at the end of the presentation, there are some references, so here they are. If you want to uh, check them direct, check, check them, mm, just pause the video and see all the details. And thank you for being here with me at SAS Explorer. Have a great day. Bye.